Welcome to Grit and Gravitas with Anne and Annie, bringing you savvy, spirited stories of success. We're excited to deliver 30 minutes of inspiration, impact, and goodness. We'll be bringing you guests and friends from around the country who have very special work and personal journeys. I'm Ann Dieter Gallagher, your co-host with Annie Carnathan, and this is Grit and Gravitas. Let's go. Annie Carnathan, here we go. Uh, Happy High Gear Podcast Day. It is really incredible to be with you. (laughs) Just you. Uh, We were just talking about, because when we talk, it's the show, how we would not do this with anyone else. No. And I I told you, my husband, Corey, shout out, um, kind of laughs every time he listened to our podcast. He said, you guys are having like a love fest going on. But time's non-renewable. Don't trade your time. Don't give your time. Don't spend your time with people you don't authentically like. And I'm going to share this, even though I I already shared it with him, because I think it's really important in that in that regard. Uh, I send my son a quote every day. He's in college, and uh, one that I love that I haven't sent yet because I'm get quotes all day, every day. I just love quotes. Everyone has already said it better. Uh, is uh, don't let anyone with dirty feet walk through your headspace. I love that. I've never heard it before. I haven't either. I love it. And I think life is all about sort of rephrasing all the commonalities of what we do in life day in and day out, you know, especially in business. And it's a constant culling, right, of the people who reaffirm us, right. who are like-minded, who are philosophic, who, who, who give, right, as good as they get. And that's a constant, constant uh, effort for me. Good. Well, and I forgot to say welcome to Grit and Gravitas. Right. <laughs> and savvy, by the way, can I just say, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Savvy, yeah. spirited stories of success for new listeners. Welcome. Uh, we invite you into our headspace, and uh, we're going to share some great stuff today. Sorry, I cut you off. It's your vest. <laughs> For those who, uh, who are watching by video, I'm kind of channeling my limelights here that I uh, cut for our centerpiece because we're all about the ambiance in the podcast studio. I really respond to environment, hence the uh, pop of orange, which is in my company logo, the beautiful piece of art, the flowers... Uh, framing the art, the limelights. And I just kind of had, I was kind of feeling it today with my uh, bright lime vest in case I get lost in any of our state or national parks. I cannot believe we have not hiked together yet. Well, we're going to do that because getting out in the fresh air, talking, hiking, we could, uh, we could think up some incredible things. So filling. So now we have to go to Nashville Yes. And we have, on to, our radar. we have to hike together. Danielle Breezy, we're going to uh, loop her into that. Uh, her energy is unbelievable. I enjoy so much following her. Like, that, I want more of her. No, she, because we interviewed her, you know, remotely, I felt like she was going to jump right out of the screen. Yeah. That, but that has to be yeah. a plug in. So that's in soon. Everyone stay tuned. We're going to be doing our podcast live from Nashville. So that will be awesome. That's a treat. Um, and so, uh, it's just, I think it's important for everyone, first of all, to, to watch this video, to see Anne's bang and vest, right? Uh, <laughs> and your shoes. Yeah, and, and to just, shoes. yeah, my, my astronaut shoes yes. and homage to yes. Anne, uh, most comfortable things ever, but, uh, just to really say how much it matters to plug in to people who are reaffirming who, who for, for people, you know what? I say this to people. I said, you know what? One of the most precious things about Anne's grace, whether you're on social, whether I see you, whether I walk in is that you are 100% of the time, always who I thought you were. And there's something enormously well, that's uh, comforting. uh, And, and I, and, and when you think, and I said this to you, when you think I maybe not today, we don't have a guest. 
you know, you're working some, some, some things for our, our company later on. Maybe I just call that in and not do that. And then I think, how would you not do that? <laughs> this is like the greatest so party of week, right? No. Um, and I have found that, you know, there's situations where you think, oh, I don't really, I don't really have time. I don't, I don't have the headspace. If you've got to shift out of what a, whatever a work deadline is and come in here and do this, as you often say, out, uh, out of a des deep desire within us to give back and to shorten the learning curves of other, especially young women, men too. Uh, you know, we're fans of men, but especially the, the younger women. I'm always thankful that I did that. I'm always thankful even when I say, ah, oh, I don't know. But then I walk away and think, thank, thank the Lord. I did do that. I'm, I'm better. I feel better. I have, you know, a refreshed, uh, viewpoint for the day. So thanks for for deciding to come. This is a heavy lift. And I just, you and I are both really uh, intentional that people enjoy this, you know, commit to this. Yeah. Uh, it is the sole reason, you know, we're doing it. And so I think if, if you can say to us, how about this? How about, we have people that say, you know, that suggest guests. It's, right. it's all about right. paying it forward and we're content driven. So we have to be interesting. And I think it, it just matters to, um, speak those words, right? Yeah. Use words, have conversations and communications. Um, to that point, you know, maybe narcissistically, I love, and, and we plan out our topics by things we're curious about things that we want to know, things we wish we had known before, you know, I started my business before you launched in an entirely different career trajectory at, at universal. These are things that will, I deeply feel, uh, make people's lives better. We tell them, you know, don't go right, go left for these situations. This didn't work out for us. This is how we researched it. Uh, and we bring in people that would do the same to, to really, uh, lift up people, perhaps younger than us, or maybe mid careers, uh, to make the best decisions for the rest of their career. Take one thing from this 30 minutes, which will blow by. And everyone tells me that, right? So that's how we know we're in the right space with the right amount of time. Right. And I think it's important for everyone to understand you and I don't necessarily look at things the same way. And that's but good. It, it's, it's, paramount. It's imperative that we're learning from each other with a trust, yeah. you know, and a foundation and without judgment. Right. Because I don't think we learn much in an echo chamber. I we don't think, learn much in our right. own head. And here's a business vitamin before we even get into what our topic is today. To that point, surround yourself with people who don't think like you do. Surround yourself. Don't be in that echo chamber. Um, <clears throat> Challenge yourself every single day. It might be some people at work and it might be colleagues or it might be, uh, you know, friends in your community, uh, boards you serve on. Go deeper with the people that cause you to, to self-reflect, to challenge, and to better understand why you believe the way you do about certain issues or topics. This is a crazy time we're living in. And, and I think that what I've always thought is if I don't agree with you, if you don't agree with me, if we have a different lens and we're bringing our entire life to our lens, right? right? That's right. impacting a hundred percent of how we see things. It doesn't diminish me if you don't agree with me. Right. It doesn't diminish my sense of self or my commitment to how right. and why I think what I think. Right. And how intentional I am. And look, I'm the first to say I'm emotional. The pistons start firing. And sometimes <laughs> you can't put the genie back in the bottle. I mean, we all have moments where we'd like those back. But if we don't self-reflect and say, if I knew now what I knew then, how would you handle it differently? And that's what this is, right? You and I, in a look back, but based today on really high-functioning, successful businesses, it's always an adjustment. Mm -hmm. It's always a tweak. You know, and it's never set it and forget it. And I just think I don't understand why we feel we have to be the smartest person in the room. I'm not the smartest person. If I am, my gosh, I leave the room. I can't, no, no. Well, I want to be in the room with smarter people. That's exactly right. Yeah. So I, I do think Male, we, female, I, I want different industries represented. I think that's a, uh, that makes us all better. And 
and choose uh, work with clients that don't think the same. I think that's where we bring our freshest perspective is working with people uh, who never considered how we're viewing, you know, whether it's a media situation, a PR situation, even a narrative. And they're saying, oh, you know, I, I didn't think of that. Well, you have to find, to me, partners. Um, and, and I'm intentional with the word partner and not client. Client, to me, is colder, right? A partner means we're, we're equally responsible right. for the relationship. And so when I, when I look out and I say partner, am I someone who in disagreeing or pushing back, how is that intentionality that I have to Im improve things, consider this received? And it's 100% what the other person on the other side of the desk perceives because they don't care what my intentions are, right? Like it's, it's, there's a big difference between interesting and interested. You know, I can be interesting, but that doesn't mean anybody's interested in what I have to say or how I approach things. And so there is, um, almost a give and take to that of, Hmm, this is what you want to do. Could I just sort of say, here's maybe some things you could consider. Yeah. You're ultimately the decision maker, right? But it's sort of like your law firm. Like, here's the pluses and the challenges. What would it mean to speak that versus just, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, right? And so that's not always received well. That can be perceived as coming out of your lane, right. could per be perceived as pushing back. And but you're always gonna you're always gonna work with people that push back. You're gonna have clients slash partners that push back. That's not necessarily bad, but I think this. Uh, environment that we're in right now, anybody who pushes back is, you know, perceived, that's perceived negatively, but we don't learn without surrounding ourselves with people that push back, that challenge. And that, the benefit of that for me, that might be, uh, I better understand why I'm coming to the situation with the thoughts and the opinions I have. It's not really that someone's setting out to change me. I'm just really more better understanding and being clear about presenting my thoughts because you've pushed back and I've, I've said, but no, this is, this is the lane I'm in. And this is, uh, you know, from my experience, this is why we're going to do this. But I do think too, and I think you touched on that, right? It's, it's much more polarized now to push back, right? There's much more of a tendency to say, Hmm, you're making this more difficult for us. You're going to walk the plank. And you think about, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. It hasn't like this many years of equity, this many right. years of relationship, this many, this many, this many. Maybe not. And so I think those rules of engagement, to your point, have changed. Yeah. The intensity, the polarization. Great, you're going to do this. Great, right? And and so I think it's it's... It's to your point, it's that re-entrenchment. Like you and I are very successful. We've plied our craft mm -hmm. for most of our adult life. All of my adult life. And so I think it's important to say just because circumstances, people, situations around us have changed, that's the reflection in the mirror to say, how do we make that pivot? Because whether we like it or not, we can keep doing things the same way. Right. It's not going to play and be received the same way. And there is much more intensity, much more pressure. Go, go on a plane if you don't believe me. <laughs> you know, just the, 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 the tension. Yeah. Traveling, right? I don't know if you experienced that. Yes. Or... And I, I told you, we just got back from Yellowstone and, and Green Now, the first time at Yellowstone... Yes. As amazing as you could have imagined. Breathtaking, right? Really, um, uh, driving up to uh, Grand Teton National Park was just, you know, there was a struggle, and you know uh, me, a struggle with capturing that on the iPhone and throwing the iPhone out the car window and just say, this, this is majestic. Thank you, Lord. This is this is absolutely majestic, and the same with Yellowstone. You know, we we where we were, we stayed in Idaho. <clears throat> we were driving through Grand Teton every day to get to Yellowstone, so we were uh, 
visiting both and spending time at both. But Yellowstone, just unbelievable. And you can't, we didn't do it justice, you know, so I was texting the entire family. They're probably like, mom, put the phone down. <laughs> we have to come back. We're planning a family trip with, you know, kids, spouses, grandkids, because you can't describe it. The pictures don't do it justice. Um, and when I, and when I think about it, we haven't ruined it yet. No, no. Uh, Yellowstone has, has not lost any species since it was, uh, founded. And oh, by the way, the world has lost 69% well, so of wildlife species, right? I mean, yeah, we're good that's in, what we're doing. We're good in Yellowstone. So. But I want to, well, one of those related things is, um, you know, if, if, if you're living through your phone to record something, are you really? No, you're not. As my uh, one brother, Philip, says, be where your feet are. I mean, you have to be. Now, I... I can surrender a little bit of an excuse because of what my career is in, in PR. Like what, what do I want to capture? But it's a deep, uh, challenge. I'm going to tie it into the rules of engagement have changed in the workplace. You know, how, how much do we invest ourselves? So that's one, uh, challenge, you know, how, how deep do we go with every project and, and client and partner? Um, but back to the, uh, maybe the different perspectives and welcoming that and truly embracing that or saying, you believe something, you have a different opinion than I do, therefore I'm not even going to work with you. Like, I just feel we've got to get back to uh, a, an equilibrium here with this. And we're an average of eight hours a day on a device. Yeah. Th think about that. And some of that is just inciting these opinions. You know, you're you're just becoming more entrenched when, when you get out, um, into many different parts of our state, let alone the country, you just realize, you know, we're all, uh, raising families, doing the best we can at work. That kind of, uh, tension is not present in many places, but you get back in, you pick up your device and all of a sudden you feel that tension. Well, I'll give you um, an indication because I think this is all really important b business vitamins, yes. right? So so let's take uh, an 18 to 24 year old, okay? And uh, hypothetically, it's fall weekend, kids home from college, but- So um, this is your wheelhouse. So so, <laughs> so Kevin Hart is, is in yeah. Hershey and I think that's the most spectacular thing bridge that gap. We're all going like friends are going, kids are like kids, not like young men. So, <laughs> so there's an email ahead of time. This to say, uh, tonight when you come to Kevin Hart, you have to, you have to relinquish your phone. Oh, really? What? You got to relinquish, you got to rel relinquish your phone. So Ian, they had, so a, you don't mean really give your phone up. What do you well, mean? Well, here's that? what happens. So you go there and outside they get your, where your seat or whatever. Um, and you get a, a bag that then is your phone goes in and is locked for the second it's in there. You don't have a phone until it's unlocked. That's at whatever point you either leave the show or the show finishes. Oh my word. Do you want to see? Three 18 year old males. And at one point, one of the, one of the guys is, is rattling this and is like, I can't take it. I can't, like he's trying to pry it apart. I said, Nesta, what is going on? He said, I can feel texts coming. <laughs> I can feel them come. I can feel, I look, I, 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 I can't look at my phone. Like that. Probably a little dramatic, yeah. right? But that's how unaccustomed yeah. they are to period not being away from it. And that would have been Kevin Hart and his opening acts here and their phone there constantly. Right. Yeah. Right. So one of the openers for Kevin Hart says, Hey, here's the reason you don't have your phone. Something they don't want to like, if, if you, if you, if you record the act yeah. and it gets out of who nobody has to buy it anymore. Right. I mean, I, I'm like right to the Benjamins. Right. This is your craft. Right. And if you can see it and not pay for it. Right. Especially now. They said it was solely to enhance your experience so that someone beside you. In front of you. Around you. 
isn't on their phone. Yeah. And just be here, be with us, laugh with us. Right. And leave that behind. And then I'm in the suite and someone, I, I wear an Apple watch as my fitness tracker, right? Yeah. So I wear two watches, all good. Geeked out. Says Annie, oh, Annie, hmm? girl, you didn't give him your Apple watch. <laughs> I said, seriously, was I supposed to do that? She said, absolutely. Oh, you were? You're supposed to give him your any, any device, which, you But know, you hold the bag. It stays in the bag and you hold the bag? Yes. Now, the other thing is, all the bags are identical. You cannot tell the bags apart. So did everyone comply? You have to or you can't get in. How many people? I want to say if it wasn't a sellout, it was absolutely clear. I mean, he's a world-class act. And he's an act that, that absolutely makes it a point to come to Hershey. Yeah, good. Yeah. So. I mean, I. Um, that's the drop-off, though, to people we're hiring, right? Yeah. To people yeah. we're engaging with. You and I are in here. I haven't looked at my phone since I got here. I ate my apples with you. We caught <laughs> up. We put there. We walk in. And, you know, what in the world is happening out there? I don't know, because I'm looking at you and talking to you, right? So masks don't take that. Like, there are just places where I'm just away from it. Yeah, and, and we need to be to, for I need health. to be. Health, physical health and mental health, and we've talked about that before. Uh, you, you have to put it away. Um, but now back to the concert situation. That's, that's fascinating from, you know, from an artist side or a you know, maybe it's a, uh, any performance individual where they're giving, uh, a speech or presentation, but a musician, an artist, a presenter, there's two sides to that. I'll put my PR hat on. They all love to have an entire 40,000 people videoing something to send it out or, or to, 12 at the giant to, center yeah, yeah. to, to yeah. amplify and introduce Come to this show. Yeah, into all different spheres. Hey, follow this person on Spotify, this person on, you know, Amazon or <clears throat> whatever. But then really to be passionate about in you know, be where your feet are and enjoy this, uh, settle in and enjoy this one hour experience with us. This company, these were reusable bags. And trust me when I tell you, mine was used before. Yeah. And so that's like, that's what this company does. And I'm, t to me. So you didn't know that ahead of time before an email no, went No, out. no, we did. Oh, you did. So, okay. so as okay. like anybody with a ticket, a suite owner, yeah. right? Anybody like that. Um, did it. Hershey does a great job of messaging that. Good. Right. Cause Good. this is going to be. Yeah. Massive. I mean, this is a huge, huge, and, and my point to that is it's a level set for me, right? It's a refresh into people that are two, three, four years older. Right. Well, how working. was Walker with it? Like, did the, did the young people respond well? Were they glad that they were, you know, were doing that? No, they wanted to rip that bag open, <laughs> get to their phone, <laughs> you know, especially one, one, one buddy, excuse me. And I've known these kids so long now, but just more right. than others, it's sort of like, that's, that's like whatever, right? And honestly, you think to yourself, what's going to happen in an hour, an hour and a half? That they cannot, it's an appendage almost. Yeah. And then to feel something happening that they can't see, respond to, it's, it's the way the world is, right? It's sad to me. It's uh, meaning eight hours a day. That's it. Not Nesta, not any of the boys. Not, it's, it's just what, that's how they communicate. And I think it's just important for me to understand that. But then all the more to cherish our, this opportunity, you know, of just talking and embracing you for the moment, for the, for the 30 minutes and understanding how, how was your work week? What's going on? You know, <clears throat> talk about the clients, partners. Um, and you need that. You can't, uh, I can't find that online. Um, I like to read facial cues. I like to read body language. Um, I feel challenged and refreshed when I'm talking, you know, either to my team in person. I deeply miss that. 
you know, because they're, they live uh, in different states. When we get together, I mean, we're like a whirlwind of creativity. So, um, and you, you know, with a lot of your team is still remote. That's, uh, and that brings me full circle, right? And that's how we keep refreshing the status of business today. Yeah. That's how we can't say we, we handled that, you know, remote work hybrid because it keeps evolving right. and we have to keep performing at high, high elite levels within that. Yeah. And so I don't think that without this and collaboration long term we will not lose something yeah. imperative flip side there are jobs that aren't necessarily collaborative right they might be data jobs they might be hand to keyboard <clears throat> buying digital right. they may be all of these different elements that is really a tech job. What I, I, on Wednesdays, the day mostly everybody's in, usually all the other days, no one's there. And it just changes the dynamic when you can hear people talking and laughing. And Annie, what do you want for lunch? I mean, it's just, there's a part. Say you're big on office lunches and stuff, but even... So say you're in the middle of a media strategy or something, but to be able to walk next door to hear, you know, who's ever buying that, who's ever doing the research online and, and say, oh, maybe that isn't what I thought, you know, to catch those things in person um, is so critical. It's essential to me. Yeah. And I think I have to be careful that I'm not a dinosaur, that I'm not a buggy whip. And then I think about what meaningful relationship, period. Yeah. You know, parent, child, business, bestie. Like what, 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 what is the scope of that that's sustainable without human direct yeah. interaction? Now, that is my EQ. I, that's what fills up my soul. I am relentless about trying to find someone to talk to. <laughs> that's what, that's what I love. Well, that's why, you know, you sales is in your bones and that's why you're, you're so extraordinary at capturing what your, you know, your topic, your angle, your principles are and attracting new clients and partners. Yeah. And the full pivot to really, I'm selling, you know, our internal team, it's all persuasion, right? Yeah. And so if I had to say it, like, I, I don't mind the term, I mean, I'm a salesman, right? With pride, dignity, like yeah. with a lot of a uh, hard road. But the bottom line is that's, I've pivoted that into more of a persuasive leadership sure. because you say this periodically, like for, for someone to be a leader, X amount have to want to follow. And there's not the same brain I have. Right. There's not this unbridled, oh, I get what she's doing. People say to me, well, I didn't tell you that was a red flag because you do lots of things I don't get. And then they're, they, they work out. Right. And so I think that there's that part of a spirit of something where hugging someone, seeing someone, looking someone in the eye, there's just, that's what human interaction and connection is. And I think when we, um, so this topic is rules of engagement. We're just going back. I'm going to reframe it that we didn't. Well, we're down to like two minutes yeah. already. So I hope people <laughs> but enjoyed to your this. Point, like there's, there's great value in sharing a meal with someone. So a, a coworker, a, a new hire, you know, so if you're in the office and you're having those office lunches, there's great, um, opportunities and just sitting down food somehow levels the playing field for us. And you take away maybe some of the um, tension that there might be in the office or a challenge, you know, or maybe there's a, a struggle with a client going on and you bring uh, everyone together over a meal. Say it's a lunch, say it's coffee and, and you know, pastries. Um, I think you don't get to do that virtually. You can't do that. No, and you immediately are breaking bread. Yeah. And that's that's my analogy right. for obvious reasons. And <laughs> right. it's, it's, it's not the same if you're not breaking bread. And it's not the same if I'm not in mass giving praise. And, and so that, that 
distinction is that common denominator that to me is right. ever it's essential. And so when I think about you know eating and and do it's it's all about that nourishment right of not just our body but our right. soul. And I do think that's the common denominator. You know, we could come together and have mass and not break bread. It wouldn't be the same. So I do think there's that component that I just wrestle, grapple. I have enormous angst around it, right? And what 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 to do about it? And I'll be first to know I don't know, right. right? And I don't know a lot of things, and I know what I don't know, and so I'm just going to keep looking for guidance and and reading the tea leaves and trying to do what's best for everyone right. as well as the company. That's my business vitamin today. And we weren't even going to talk about. I, it. I don't even know how we got, but that's I think more the organic part of this. I think the the um you know, my, uh, opinion at the beginning of our conversation, the rules of engagement surround yourself with people who come to an ideal or a principle or even an ideology, dare I say, with a totally different perspective, you will be better for it. Don't look to shut everyone down in the workspace or, or in your, you know, personal time or in your community, look to engage all types of people because your business will be enriched. You'll be able to provide better for your clients. You know, we don't take all the same type of client. Um, we are not specific in any one industry. I don't serve probably the lion's share of my professional colleagues think entirely opposite than I do. And that's not a, we, we revel in that. We said this, you know, tell me again, how you arrived at that, uh, decision or that lens. Um, and these are people that are different generations than I am. And I, you know, I, we have great conversations with uh, our children too of uh, how did you get their experiences? My experiences as a business owner are different, but the beginning of our podcast started because we had a difference of opinion. <laughs> That's how we got here. And there's enormous value and currency in that because I trust you. And, and that it's, it's absolutely, I said this the other day, there's nothing that's going to happen that we can't fix. Yeah. But if I, we talk about, right? I get a little worried for the younger generations that they see this play out in media, social media and media, and and lose hope and lose the perspective of what makes all of us great. Our From our freedom to start a business with any idea we can think of, um, we really do, we can align well. We can play well with other, others even if we don't agree. And that that, you know, business churns on even though we might have these huge uh, conversations. But look to surround yourself with people, hire people that think differently than you do. Going to end on that note, ADG. That's a gem. <laughs> have a high gear day, everybody. Thank you so much for listening. Thanks for listening. It's our desire that these stories will bring energy, ideas, and fresh thinking that you can use today. Subscribe to our podcast and follow us on Instagram. And have a high gear day.